let's talk about tax automation. We need to do tax organizers. That's the biggest time saver for firms. And we offer three different templates right out of the box. Um, let's start with our standard tax organizer. So if I click this, what we're gonna see is it's gonna bring up a personalized tax organizer that really leverages everything that's in the organizer that comes out of the system. So if I go up here and click on source file, we're gonna see this is a CCH organizer. If you've used CCH tax software, it's gonna look really familiar. It's got lots and lots of pages in it. So what we do is we take this organizer, we read it, and we hand the organizer over to the client as well. So that really handles clients who like this older experience and bridges really the past with the future. What we can pick up here is this Ryland R. Nichols. He's an owner, um, lives in Indianapolis, etc. So what we've done is we've gone through this and we read everything. So if I go to personal information, Rylan R. Nichols, owner, Benny Nichols, all that information we just saw, we essentially pull out of there and present in a very nice way. We also show that eight of the 14 items are pre-filled. If our ID records are incomplete and out of date, please upload them. Well, we don't need to do that. Those are good. So hit NA there. That gives positive confirmation. The client looked at it. Has your identity been compromised? Yes, it has. Um, please provide the pins, 552211. Would you like to use the account below for direct deposit? Yes. Uh, and then we, we'll go ahead and give that uh, information here. So everything's updated in real time. Personal information, contact information. Then the, we get right into the questionnaire. Marital status change? Yes. I got married in June. Awesome. Home address change, no, no, no. So really fast to get through the questionnaire. Um, this covers all the major bases, but really the crown jewel is gonna be the document request list. So if I come out here, this document request list pulls out the names of all the documents the client provided in the prior year. So they had a 1099G for unemployment income, 1099INT from company one, 1099INT for store two, a div from Chase Bank, Etc. So this is really the top feature for firms that just want to get the basics back. I'm going to, I'm going to dive a little more into that in a second. So the client can come through here, bang, 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 knock these out. Um, it's worth noting also at this point that we work uh, on tablets, we work on mobile phones. In this case, you're noting that um, we use React. So if they have 1099 INT, right? They can go in here, upload file on for example scan document and boom there they are it's going to try to find you can see it's actually trying to find the edges of a document right there but we'll we'll crop the document adjust the contrast uh, convert it to a pdf they can take multiple page photos etc super easy or they can just click on na and just kind of go through it that way um, they can also swipe uh, so the ui is really quite good for clients on any device so backing out of that Let's go back out here so you can see a little more. I'll widen that. Okay, so we just resized everything. We'll see we have an anything new section. We also handle schedule C, E, F, and A. And it's really, really easy for them to get through this. So that's a standard request. Let me go back here. We also have, in addition, simple tax organizers. So for clients that firms don't think are gonna return these things, we can have something very simple, which is just give us the documents, right? Super simple. And then if they want, they can send their own questionnaire alongside it with their own custom questions. That's pretty common. But this is a great way to go if firms don't anticipate getting anything back from the client. We've had a lot of requests for that. In fact, the way we built the system is you can send some clients a simple organizer others a standard, and even others a comprehensive organizer. This is a great way to go if you know your client base really well and you know what they're likely to do. So we had a lot of requests for this. Um, it really works out well. And I'll show what the comprehensive looks like. It's a pretty big load, so it takes a while to bring up in a browser, but here it comes. So it has the personal information, the contact information, a dedicated dependence section, estimated tax payments, wages and investments, etc. This is a lot closer to what firms are doing 
for that whatever percentage they're getting on sending, let's say, a full UltraTax or a full CCH organizer. So we see a lot of use for this. Um, you see we've got a lot of itemized deduction questions, credits and deductions, and we cover all of the states as well. The way the states work is, in this case, the organizer uploaded has tons of states on it. So for every state that's listed, we'll provide state-specific questions that are relevant to that particular jurisdiction. So this is a great way to go. You can mix and match. So that's the client tax organizer experience. And we're going to get into the firm experience in just a little bit. Okay. So let's take a look at the tax delivery experience. So we took a look at smart tax organizers. This is smart tax delivery. What you're going to see here is same to-do list. We have a taxpayer um, tax return sitting here and the client's name is resident of Delaware. What you're going to see is the summary page right up front. Clients want to know what they owe or what they're getting back. And when you think about this compared to, let's say, a DocuSign experience, this tells them exactly right up front what's going on instead of taking them straight to the signature pages. So they're not going to call the firm saying, hey, am I paying or am I getting a refund, right? Pretty common. Instead, what we're going to do is show them that, and then we're going to, get, we're going to give them a personalized walkthrough. So what you can see here is step number one is to review, step number two is to sign, and step number three, if they owe money, is to pay. So federal return is right here. What we did is we took that large tax package and we broke up this page by page. We put the schedules here. Everything they need to do to review to meet IRS compliance requirements is right here. And they're going to get positive confirmation they, meaning the firm, is going to get positive confirmation that the taxpayer actually reviewed their federal return. Then it'll show the states. In this case, there's just one state, which is Delaware. Awesome. There it is. It'll review and approve that. If they owe estimated payments, we're going to say you owe estimates in Delaware and, and to the federal government in these amounts on these dates. If they want to get ahead, start on this and click on pay. It'll take them to the appropriate uh, site where they can go ahead and make, for example, an estimated payment right there. So that's uh, how that works. Once the client is ready, they're going to approve the payments there, the estimated payments, and then we're going to take them to the signature step. So we'll click on eSign, and it's going to go ahead and load, in this case, KBA. I want to pause my screen for just a second and come right back after I uh, go through the KBA process. Okay, we're back. I just passed KBA. It's going to bring us into the e-sign process. And just so you're aware, and I'll show you this when we get to the firm side, KBA is optional. So in this case, there's just one signatory, and that's me. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and we'll go ahead and sign. Um, of course, this works on a mobile device as well or on a tablet. But we'll move through. It's going to thank us for signing. Great. Once we've signed, then it's going to go ahead and move us to the payment step. In this case, we owe money. Um, let's see, what are we doing here? Okay, there we go. Hit next, pay federal. And it's going to show us the voucher. And it's going to essentially allow us to print it. And if you want to go ahead and send that check, the client can feel free to do that. Or we can go ahead and click on pay online. In this case, it's going to take us to where, where we can make a payment to the IRS. Hit direct pay, off we go. After we've done that, it'll ask us if we want to mark it paid or if we want to keep it open. So I'll go ahead and mark that as paid. We'll submit it. We're done. So along the way, the second the client signs the return, it'll fire a notice back to the firm so they can get the client on file. And then the client can submit it and be done. So really, that's it. It's that simple to get onboarded, to get through the organizer, and to go through tax delivery. So it's all behind the same login, it's all secure, it's all IRS compliant. The documents stay in one place, the messages stay in one place, so the client has one habit. They log into one portal, get everything there, and off they go. So next stop, let's take a look at the firm side. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna take a quick look at the firm side for Lysio. So really everything we saw earlier runs through the request module. And if I come out here, we can create new requests. In the case of the new client onboarding checklist, for example, we have templates. In these templates, we can go ahead and edit them quickly, but you saw we had a personal information section, a contact information section, we had questions underneath it. 
some of the questions have conditions. Um, so you can go ahead and change these from yes, no answers to file uploads or short answers. We can add more dependencies under the questions, et cetera, if we want to. Uh, we can move the items around and you know reorder them. So it's really, really easy. Make changes, save as a new template, save the t changes under the same template, or just make some changes, preview, and send. So this is a really great engine for monthly close, for onboarding, for just about anything that's a standard type request. Um, we also recommend it highly for for example, um, 1065 returns, 1120S, et cetera, because there's no organizer form, they're just standard questionnaires. So we can ship some templates or the client can create their own. So within that request engine, we have really this import function, which leverages the request engine to essentially build the tax organizers and to build the tax returns dynamically. And they really run off a very simple concept, which is, from the tax software, whether it's Lacert, Drake, CCH, TR Ultra Tax, or Intuit Pro Series, all you need to do is, for example, I'm gonna grab some tax organizers, just drag the organizers, drag and drop them in, hit begin upload. We'll build them, personalize them, do the whole thing. So that's it. Um, on the other side, if you wanna send some tax returns, it's exactly the same thought process, which is, I'll, I can go ahead and grab some tax returns here and just drag and drop them over. And then we hit begin upload and that really starts the process. So we have some really intelligent matching, which is if we match the client ID, um, it'll automatically pick the account. If we match the email address inside of the return or the organizer, it'll automatically pick the client. If that doesn't happen, then we'll go ahead and have the firm select them. So look here, there's, these items are processing. If I want to take a look at drafts ready to send, I can come out here. We'll see the auto matches there. These did not auto match, which is fine. We can go ahead and just open them up and send them through. But let's take a look at this um, tax return that we just uh, sent through. So the source files here, you're going to see this as 46 pages. And what we did was we went ahead, identified that there is a federal return, and we pulled that out. There's a federal return and the schedules that we're going to send through. Okay. So really, really simple way to um, show the firm what it is exactly that we did. We pulled out the Alabama return, we pulled out the estimated payments, and we identified in this case that there are two signatories, Christine Client and Craig Brown. We also see that the account was automatically matched and the recipients were matched. So we put them both here, and then there's payments due to the federal government and to the state of Alabama. So. If you want to change the settings we have for signatures, you feel free. Um, we can turn off KBA for one or both. We also have some other features, which is let's say you only have one email address. It's going to take that off automatically and say Christine Klein, and it needs a second signer. Well, if we don't have an email for the second signer, we either have to add one, add a contact there, or specify sign on same device. So in this case, very common for older couples, one email address just send it to that single email address. It'll KBA both of them so you know that it's correct and they can just pass the iPad across the table, both sign on the same device from that single email. So that's IRS compliant as well, but really we essentially just made it a drag and drop experience, um, review it, hit send, we do the chasing and it's all, it's all done. So that's really it. If you have a lot of different organizers you wanna send at once, you can do that. Just go ahead and select all of them, hit the bulk send, pick, it'll have you pick the date and send it out. So what firms will do is we bring in all the information from the tax system, just drag and drop them through. We automatically pair everything based on ID and email because all the data is fresh. Uh, select all of them, hit bulk send, and you're done with sending the organizers. So really a simple process there. What I also would like to show you is if you want to track everything, uh, we were using Sarah Peterson's account. So if I go out here to contacts and click on Sarah Peterson, here she is. We can see the requests and we can see exactly where she is with each item. So with these organizers or with these returns and so forth, she can come out here uh, or we can come out here and see progress in real time. So before the client even submits anything, we can keep track of where things are. What's very common with organizers, for example, is we'll get items from the client out of band. So they might email something, they might drop something off, or they might tell us some answers either over the phone or over text, whatever it might be. 
So we offer some nice features here that allow you to go ahead and uh, edit and play along. So you can pop in here if the client says, you know, hey, I didn't have any of these expenses and I didn't change jobs. You can come in here as you just talk to them, as you interview them and make the changes right in lockstep. And that's going to update it on their side too. So everybody's working off of the same song sheet. Also, we got a really nice way to um, essentially review all the answers when everything comes back. Just use the response preview here. And we're going to give the preparer a really nice zebra striped um, view of everything that happened. And what we learned last year was firms really wanted to have a strong <clears throat> NA, no and yes type answer area. And what you're really looking for is if there's a yes, that means there's something else you're gonna need to know. Like, oh, were you signed a pin? Yes, I was. Well, pre please provide the pin. There's that 552211 we did a little bit ago. You also see, did your mar marital status change? Yep, I got married in June, there it is. So super fast, super easy way to review. And we provide a single zip file with all the files all cross-referenced back. So it doesn't get much easier than that. You can put it in the grunt work, sure prep, CCH can, auto flow, whatever it might be. So really easy way to go there. If you're not getting answers and you really need to get answers, go ahead and use this little guy, send SMS reminder. So if I click on it, it'll put the link to the request out here and we can go ahead and say, please get this back to us today, okay? This works much faster than email reminders. Obviously, Lysio is sending email reminders uh, to keep everybody on deadline. But if that doesn't work, which sometimes it doesn't always work, you can have them just respond via text, okay. Um, and this gets answers at least eight times faster. It's probably more like 20 something times faster but I think we can statistically say very clearly it is uh, at least eight times faster now. Okay, so okay, so it just comes right back, went right to my phone. And this is from a business texting number, not from personal phones, um, obviously much better for the firm. So all this information goes under the contact. I'll go back under here. Under here also on this timeline, that SMS text is now there as well. We'll also capture um, messages, emails, et cetera. It all goes on the same timeline. So that's it. That's Lysio Tax Automation. Super easy to use. There's a lot more depth there, but I think that's pretty good for a 20-minute intro. Hope you like it and look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you.